All right. Abner Mares is calling out Javante Davis. He is trying to cash that career out. Also, Javante Davis has been uh, sought out by Leo Santa Cruz. It seems as if we got a couple of our uh, fighters trying to help Javante Davis be a superstar by serving up their career careers for an uneven beatdown. Seems like a great job of promotion by Floyd Mayweather Jr. We're going to talk about that in this video. All right. Welcome back to the channel, subscribers. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. And also, I want to thank you to all of the supporters that uh, that watch the videos, watch the videos to the end. Let me know what you think. Like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Also, to my Patreon community, thank you for your support. We got a real good one coming up today. Also, I want to thank you to all of the uh, the excuse me would like to thank everybody in the live stream community that comes by every day monday well comes by monday through friday to chop it up with me in the mornings and also sunday morning where we have our weekend wrap-up show with the great blood boxing kqk kc boxing and curtis sugar uh kurt anderson formerly known as kurt sugar uh sunday mornings 8 a.m now let's talk about one of my favorite fighters and what is happening with him? That's Javante Davis. Javante Davis has been called out sort of by Abner Mares, who says he wants to fight Javante Davis. And from there, he's going to call it a career. He had also been uh, sought after by Leo Santa Cruz, who is looking for a, Javon a fight with Javante Davis. What I think is happening here is that Floyd Mayweather Jr. is might be hitting his stride as a promoter. Now, what promoters jobs are is to create a sense of excitement or for the fight fans and a sense of value in a fight that is a slight bit out of sorts with what the reality of it is. Right. So, so they're salesmen. They're promoting. They're going to give you a fight that you think is valuable, that you think is going to sell, is going to be exciting to watch, but yet it's going to allow them to continue to build their fighter and have their win, their fight, their fighter win six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 times. The fight, the presumably the, the promoter makes a lot of money. The fighter makes the money that the fighter makes. And that's the job of the promoter. Abner Mares wanting to fight Javante Davis and Leo Santa Cruz wanting to fight Javante Davis is a perfect example of this. And what we see in boxing over and over and over again. And what we saw in the later career, the later portion of Floyd Mayweather's career, they wound up earning Floyd Mayweather Jr. a lot of money. Now, I am not saying that this is something that I think is great for hardcore boxing fans because we know what those fights are. Leo Santa Cruz is going to get knocked out Abner Mars is going to get knocked out and they're going to get knocked out after uh, a few rounds of throwing some shots. They might actually land a punch or two on Javante Davis. But at the end of the fight, they're going to be they're going to be laid out in the corner with one of their legs stuck up underneath them. Another one at an odd angle and maybe one or two of those dudes arms just jumping up and twitching because they're not skilled enough to keep Javante Davis off of them. They're not big and strong. They're not skilled enough to outbox the uh Javante Davis, and they're not strong enough. They're not strong enough to overcome that lack of skill. And even if they had the same amount of skill as Javante Davis, they lack the strength, the speed, the athletic, the athletic talent, and just the straight up killer instinct to deal with a guy like Javante Davis. So when I hear Abner Mares say that he wants to do, he wants to fight with Javante Davis and then retire, that tells you what he wants. He wants a paycheck. He wants a paycheck. You can see that Javante Davis is getting to the point where um, the, where people are investing in him, are beginning to invest in him like they're investing in Errol Spence Jr. In, in Dallas, like they're investing money behind Deontay Wilder pretty much worldwide with his trips to the UK. You see that. You see that. And, and the feature of his fights, pay-per-view fights on, on Fox 
and the advertisements that are taking place for the that are going to take place for the pay-per-views for Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz on Fox, which, by the way, is going to do a lot better in pay-per-view than a lot of people think. You're starting to see that with Javante Davis in Baltimore where he was at the Ravens game and there was a, just a lot of love for him, a lot of, you know, a lot of um, uh, excitement about him in that foot in the NFL football game, which should also tell you if he's getting advertised at a football game more than likely, or there's a chance that he's going to take that jump to Fox. He takes that jump to Fox. You know, he leaves the show. He not, well, he goes from Fox a Showtime, which has been an incubator for him in his early career, doing 400,000, doing good numbers, and he's going to jump to Fox. Abner Mars and Leo Santa Cruz are going to want a piece of that money uh, on the way out. And it fits perfectly, perfectly with what with what Floyd Mayweather Jr. would do and what Oscar De La Hoya would do or Eddie Hearn would do or what all these promoters are, would do. So when I see that this this type of stuff happening, I'm thinking that Floyd and Leonard Ellerby are hitting their stride as promoters. I do believe that there's a learning curve in everything. There's a learning curve, curve in everything in life. There's a learning curve in boxing. There's a learning curve in a youth learning, learning curve, curve in a basketball, learning curve in business, learning curve in, in, is in being a um dealing with contracts, writing contracts, negotiating deals. There's a learning curve in that. What I've seen with, with uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr., as far as being a promoter, I appreciate that he has had the same amount of discipline and the same amount of consistency and rigor and is now starting to show the improvement it, that, um, that he showed in the boxing ring. That said, it's a smoke and mirror show. That's what it is. It's a smoke and mirror show. You're going to hear things like, who was Javante Davis fought? And then they're going to point to Abner Mares. They'll point to Leo Santa Cruz. They, now, I, I, I already can tell you who he's fought that I thought was a great win. Jose Pedraza. When he won that title against Jose Pedraza, I was like, man, this dude is a for real, for real, for real talent. And I'm just amazed how often, how very little people actually give Javante Davis credit for that fight. But what I see now coming with, with Javante Davis, it is going to be a it is an, a, going to be an attempt. And I think it's going to be a successful a, a attempt to make him him as big a star as he possibly can be. No, and I say possibly can be because he's one hundred and thirty pounder, one hundred and thirty five pounder. And he's not somebody that has the stature. I don't believe he has the physical stature. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, skills. Uh, strength, speed, anything. I just don't think he has the physical. I don't think he's tall enough, long enough to have a successful career at 147, right? Definitely not, you know, heavyweight or 160, which in the order of the weight classes where people wind up being superstars, that's usually where they where that occurs. Number one is heavyweight. Number two is welterweight. Number three is probably middleweight. Number four is 135 pounds. The superstars in boxing have always, from from what I can see, have been always been in the one of the traditional weight classes. First is the big man, second is the middle man, third is the little man. Right? That's just how it goes. The the heavyweights, the welterweights, back to the one sixties to one thirty five. I but so that's why I say as big a star as Javante Davis can be. But that doesn't mean that these are fights that are really going to give hardcore boxing fans what they want to see. They want to see Javante Davis or I want to see Javante Davis when the time is right to fight guys that are legitimate challenges to him. People like Vasily Lomachenko, people like um, maybe Shakur Stevenson with Shakur Stevenson a couple years later for Shakur Stevenson, right? Guys like that, I do believe a, a, a Miguel Burchelt, even though I don't think really Miguel Burchelt might not be that much competition for Javante. He might. I think Miguel Burchelt might get ran through. But, you know, hopefully, hopefully what this what this means is that Javante Davis will go that that Floyd Mayweather Jr. will promote him 
get his name to be very big, you know, as big as it can be being a 135 pounder. It's just what it is. He's a 135 pounder. As big as it can be. Um, and and the excitement about him as hyped as it can be, but then move in to fighting actual classic fights. Actual fights that where it's the fight itself that delivers the, the value and not necessarily the smoke and mirror show that goes around it with selected opponents that a promoter, that a good promoter almost always puts on. That's what I'm hoping. I also use because you see that with you see that with fighters from top rank. Unless Bob Arum doesn't like him, at which point in time he throws him under the bus. But look, I hope that this happens for the Air Abner Mars fight happens for Javante Davis. I hope the Leo Santa Cruz fight happens for for Abner Mares. I mean for for Javante Davis. I hope I said that right. I hope the Leo Santa Cruz Abner Mares fights happen for Javante Davis. But apparently they're going to have to happen at lightweight because. He looked so big at the at the at the overweight at that Spence fight that it makes me worry about him being able to make 130 30. So if those guys moved up to 135, it's just it's just a slaughter. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section. Um, is Javante, do, do you like how Javante Davis being moved? What do you think about, you know, the building up a fighter in the traditional promotional sense, right? Versus you know, in what point in time do you really get down to the nitty when the star building is over? Do you get down to the nitty gritty and really start fighting the top guys, uh, the top guys in boxing? Let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.